and welcome to another video from Flash Jazz Cat. And as you can see here, we are still working on the Remake XE motherboard designed by Santos P. You can find the thread over on Atari Age, I'll link it in the description below, uh, which we worked on in the previous video, but I hadn't done much in the way of assembly in the previous video. I've worked on it quite a bit, I've done a lot of off-camera work because I was kind of feeling my way through this project. I hadn't done anything uh, like a scratch build like this, certainly this magnitude since I think since I did the um, 1088XEL motherboard, which was quite some time ago now, probably about 10 years ago or something, I think. But as you can see, I've made quite a bit of progress anyway. I did end up having to put another Mauser order in. Well, I had to put quite a few different orders in for various bits and pieces. A couple of them were a little bit hard to find because the links uh, that were provided in the bill of materials a couple of the things were out of stock, etc. at Mauser, so I had to look elsewhere for them. Specifically, the NVRAM controller chip here. I couldn't, I don't think it was in stock at Mauser at the time. I ended up paying about 10 quid or something for one of these things on eBay. Similarly, with the GAL, uh, the GAL 22 for the 512k RAM expansion, I paid through the nose for that one just to, just to get hold of it uh, on eBay. The, the kind of sort of vintage chips now I would say anyway but at least it was fairly easy to program it. The SRAM that came from Mauser basically I eventually managed to get hold of everything. I wasn't too happy with the colour of the uh, the DVI connector that I bought from eBay. I think it was about four quid as well. Uh, it looked like it kind of gone yellow so I found one it was actually cheaper as well and it's black and I think it looks much much nicer. Uh, so I went for that one anyway it was a couple of pound the power switch came off the donor machine. Obviously, the PBI connector came off the donor machine. Uh, I've got the uh, joystick port still to fit the SIO connector. I've got to put all the ferrite beads on, some headers to put on. But I think it looks kind of nice. Oh, the bipolar capacitors as well. I did eventually get hold of them with the second Mauser order that I put in. Um, so we haven't got far to go really with this now. Uh, it's getting quite close to the point where we can actually apply power to it and see see if it works um so let's press on anyway but before we do that a word from our sponsor pcb way now pcb way have 10 years of experience in the field of pcb prototyping and assembly and they also have an instant quote system which should enable you to get your project up and running in next to no time at all and their experienced staff will be happy to answer any of your technical questions along the way not only that but they're also currently running a project design contest the seventh one they've done and if you want to get involved in that you're in with a chance of winning fifteen hundred dollars in cash plus $200 of coupons plus a variety of runner-up prizes. So why not pop down to PCB Way using the link below and tell them I sent you. Now one thing I completely forgot when uh, I initially started to assemble the board was of course that this is a, an NTSC machine. It's going to have NTSC parts in it. So I didn't need the PAL circuitry here. So what, what I'd actually put on the board here, I've taken it back off again. Um, I could possibly have left the parts on there, but it didn't seem right somehow, and I wasn't too sure uh, whether having some of the passive components on here would have actually upset the uh, NTSC video signal. So I've, I've taken them all off. I've kept them, but I've taken them all off just to be safe. So while we're looking closely at the board, we'll give you a little bit of a tour uh, in close-up here using 4K video. It's a little bit difficult to get the camera to focus at this distance so I have to pick the pick the distance quite carefully. I suppose cameras will be the next thing I want to upgrade but oh god I hope to get a little bit more use out of these webcams for the time being since we've just upgraded to 4k. So anyway so this is the UAV section on the board. If you're not familiar with UAV it's Ultimate Atari Video designed by Brian Edwards I think it was and it's just a plug-in module it's compatible with pretty much all of the 8-bit Ataris and the 2600 etc etc and it just gives absolute class leading uh, composite and S video output um, which you can plumb into the original video jack of course uh, it's just absolute night and day really now I've never seen any other legacy video upgrade that produces a, a picture that good uh, it's not perfect, it's it's still not entirely immune to the jail bar thing, particularly on 1200XLs, but that's probably not the fault of the UAV itself. But anyway, it's a tried and tested, uh, as I say, class-leading quality upgrade. 
and it's been replicated on this board. Well, hopefully replicated because I put it together, so it's kind of reliant on me getting the things in the right place. Uh, but here it is anyway. And now there's a jumper. If we move further up here, uh, the jumper array that I'm going to obviously uh, fit shortly in this video, in fact, that enables you to set up the video as to whether or not it's generated by the legacy video circuit here or whether it's generated by the UAV so that's quite nice and versatile so even if the uh, if I've made a boo-boo in one of the other uh, video circuits I should be able to get some sort of picture out of the machine depending on the jumper configuration here so we look at the top corner of the board here anyway as I say I've got that nice DVI connector which I think looks really really nice it's going to look nice in the back of the machine when I well when I've cut a hole for it in the case I haven't done anything with the case yet I think the case I think the keyboard could certainly do with uh, a retro bright but never mind so this power switch came off the donor machine that cleaned up quite nicely it looks fine even though this power jacks a little bit scratched up that actually is new I had them in stock already I've got quite a few of them so that's no problem this was a brand new uh, video jack obviously as I say the um, th these are quite these aren't so difficult to get off the donor but they're they're quite difficult to actually put back in because you you're trying to align two rows of springy pins but anyway I got them on if we move down here this is obviously the we've got the legacy video circuit here MMU We've got Freddy down here to go in the corner. I'm not absolutely sure whether these are needed. I don't think they are actually, the more I think about it, because we're going to put the oscillator package from the donor in the machine. I think they are for the crystal. So I might have to remove those components. We shall see. There's a couple of pads here, cast and clock. There's quite a lot of useful pads on the board for picking off um, signals for various upgrades as you can see we've got here special pads vias for uh, stereo boards and that kind of thing bell and e4 very very commonly required then the entire bus which i'm assuming i'm going to put a set of double uh, row header pins on here is uh, available on these uh, vias here it's going to be like a bit of like a gpio array on a, on a raspberry pi i suppose so you'll be able to connect anything you need to connect just using DuPont connectors on there which is very nice uh, you, you'll have noticed that we've got the Sophia 2 uh, board pre-mounted in the GTIA socket we've got the battery holder here for the uh, battery backed up uh, RAM expansion we've got the 555 timer there uh, I've put a 74F08 into this machine just as a belt and braces uh, stability it's a bit of a faster part than the 74LS chip so if the user ends up putting a side 3 cartridge in the machine hopefully it'll work uh, this improves the chances a bit this keyboard connector I had them in stock anyway so that's no problem so that's basically what's gone on this is of course the PS2 connector for the TK2 which I hope to get working as well so there you go so that's uh, the state of play at the minute so I'm going to put some more connectors and things on the board and uh, <laughs> we'll give it a try. As a matter of fact, I just uh, had a little look in the um, the thread at Atari Age about this board, or one of them, and uh, I immediately alighted on, because I noticed that Q3 was missing on the board there and I didn't appear to have any part for it, immediately alighted on a bill of materials uh, that uh, Atari Age member Panther had populated with Mauser oh, part numbers completely whereas the bill of materials I had at the time had only had a few sporadic Mauser part numbers so if I'd had that bill of materials a few weeks back I would have had no problem ordering all the parts from Mauser instead of doing what I actually did which was iteratively going through the catalogue and uh, trying to find equivalents to the examples that were given in the bill of materials so really there's a whole lot of scope for error here so I really feel quite bad about that I wished I had discovered that enhanced bill of materials in the thread i don't have the part that panther recommends for q3 here but what the hell i'm gonna stick this it's one of the um, npn transistors that uh i'm not using it would have gone on q6 uh, 
are completely missing from the bill of materials again. So on the bill of materials I was working from, there was only five of these transistors. And the only reason I've got a spare is because I'm not using one for Q6. So I don't know. Anyway, so I was clearly not working from the optimal version of the bill of materials. So I've downloaded that document now. So I'll know better next time. So we'll see. To be quite honest, at this point, we're obviously going to configure the machine to use the UAV outputs. So as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really matter one way or the other uh, whether the uh, stock video is any good or not, because we're not going to use that signal path at all. And if I can just find the back of the part that I've just put on the board, so I can solder it. Yeah, so hands up there. I definitely think some more. I felt like I did a lot of work ordering the parts for this thing. Obviously, I needed to read through the whole thing by the looks of it to uh, become completely clued up with what was what. So I think we'll put on next is the ferrite beads, which I've salvaged from a donor machine. I'll show you what else I've got here anyway in the little box of stuff. So in my little box here, oh, we've got, now this I actually had this in stock. It's a, an SIO connector. One of the legs is a little bit damaged here. It's a bit shorter than the other ones, but I've test fitted it and it'll be fine. I can still get the solder in there, no problem. I've also got a couple of caps to remove on the SIO bus because they would interfere with high speed SIO. I don't know why they were specced up on the original design. I'm assuming the idea was to be as faithful as possible to the original uh, Atari design. These are the VLSIs, of course, so I'll put them to one side for the moment. So we've got our oscillator package here, which, as I say, will probably mandate removal of these other bits. We've got both joystick connectors, which I took off. This is looking a bit dirty as well. I'll clean it up. I'm not going to put dirty parts on the board. There we go. Let's get rid of some of the dust. And, th and this isn't even a... Oh, is this a uh, salvaged con This uh, This might actually be a salvaged connector. And the reason I didn't take the one off the, the actual donor board that I've been provided with is just because it was riveted and I couldn't be bothered to drill the rivets out. All right, what else we got? Oh, we've got the other demuxer for the keyboards. We'll put that in while I've got it in my hand here. And yeah, so we'll put the... I salvaged these ferrite beads from the donor machine. So we'll put them in. I don't know if I'm going to have quite enough. I might have a few more lying around if I run out. So, uh, but I think as, as with anything like this, you've never actually put the thing together before. You just don't know what to expect. So anyway, we'll, we'll put the ferrite beads in until such time as I run out. So obviously because these are, these are salvaged parts, I'm going to have to straighten them up a little bit first just so we can get them in nice and neatly. So where's the first one going? We've got one to go next to Freddy down here. The leg alignment's completely off, needless to say. Now that's our first ferrite bead in. So I'll fly through the rest of them. I'll need to use this magnifier. So uh, you will join me when they're all in the board. So that's all the ferrite beads and uh, our connectors on the board. So just the headers and jumpers to do now. So yeah, what, what I said about earlier on about the uh, revised uh, build materials and the various uh, additional corrections and details uh, that came up later. And I want to thank Mr. Fish on Atari Edge as well for sending me a compendium of all the little uh, errata and uh, information that he'd gathered because he's got a couple of these boards that he's going to get around to assembling at some point and he's... Obviously, uh, he spent a bit longer on it. He was able to spend a bit more time reading the thread, gathering the information. Uh, so I appreciate that very much. Fortunately, most of the corrections don't apply to the version 2 boards, which is what this is. But I think it would the, the, uh, the bill of materials that Panther provided that's actually got all the Mauser product codes on it. Very handy. I wished I'd had that when I'd started this. In threads like that, I'm, I'm not just saying this to cover my own back, but nevertheless, it's really handy if you've got the ability to edit the first post in the thread and uh, include all of this information, the most current versions of things like the bill of materials and all that sort of stuff and corrections in the first post of the thread. That saves anybody who comes along from having to read through 20 pages of thread, which would be quite nice. I, d I don't know if uh, anybody had the ability to edit the 
top post, but that would be really useful. If you haven't got a website or something like that, another resource or GitHub page or something, probably pretty handy. I mean, I don't know if the um, if this board's actually on GitHub, it probably is some way. Obviously, you can get the, the Gerbers for the board, so uh, perhaps I should have looked there. Uh, I don't know, obviously. Um, lessons were learned. Regarding the video anyway, even if um, the legacy video isn't great because of component choices, and even if the UAV doesn't work, I would imagine the user of this board is going to almost exclusively uh, be using the DVI output from the Sophia board. So we've got three different video sources on this machine, so <laughs> hopefully one of them will work. Right, I've added a few more bits and pieces to the board now. We're getting very close to the point at which we can turn it on and uh, see if it works. And I've made a few of the corrections, which I'll take you through now. So if I can remember what I did, well, I've put the uh, the jumper array on here. This is for video configuration. And if we have a close look at that, you should be able to read it just about jumper configuration. So one set of connections is to use the legacy video circuit down here and the other one is to use the UAV. I'm not particularly fussed which one I use but one problem I've run into already is that I can't find any actual jumpers to put on these pins. Uh, if they're on the bill of materials, I mean I should have probably realised because obviously I was going to need some jumpers but I forgot to order any. And I can't actually put my hand on any at the moment, so that's fun. But we've got the Sophia, uh, the DVI board here, so I can test it using the Sophia output, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so that's on. I've put the headers on the back here as well. Uh, so you've got the whole PBI uh, bus available, which is a nice uh, addition. I mean, imagine a little Ultimate 1 megabyte board or something that would just push onto those headers and stick up a little bit that would be fun but anyway right so yes down here i had a look at some photographs of completed boards most of them were using a crystal but one of them was using the oscillator package like this and indeed these bits aren't needed which i had a feeling they weren't uh, with the oscillator package that's all built in so i've took them off oh yes another thing i spotted uh, in the thread on atari age is that this I went for the rotary encoder for the 512k RAM upgrade. It has to go on the back of the board. So I've took it off and put it on the back. And the orientation is important as well. So I've done that to give at least give the, the RAM upgrade the best possible chance of working. I've put the battery in for the battery-backed NV RAM. What else have I done? Oh yes, I have taken off the two capacitors down here for high-speed SIO operation. I've put some nice strain relief on the SIO connector there, just a couple of nuts and screws. That screw head's a little bit close to that trace there for the TK2, but uh, I think the solder mask's protecting it okay, so as long as the solder mask doesn't get broken, I think that should be fine. But a little bit more space there if that trace had just gone up and along instead of cutting into the into the territory of the SIO connector that would have been better so that's something that could be improved but anyway it looks good I haven't got the TK2 chip in yet the PIC chip because I've got a program that I should be able to actually do that using uh, this machine and I've got the programmer that Michael Saint-Pierre sent me my tech and I've used this before to do PIC programming so we'll we'll do that later on so anyway so that's it that's pretty much the board complete as far as I can tell oh yes and there was yet another missing inductor that I didn't order I don't know whether I just noticed it at the bottom of the keyboard connector so that is actually pulled off the donor that one I don't know it's just one thing after another but anyway every every hole on the board that needs to be filled with a component has been filled so <laughs> Finally. So yeah, I think what we'll do, we'll put the rest of the ICs in, so if I can actually see without having to magnify stuff. Uh, that is the Freddy chip. These, especially components that have been pulled out of, the, out of a donor board, are very, very, very fiddly to get into these precision sockets. And you've got to be so careful that you don't buckle a leg. Like I say, you've just got to be careful that one. You can tell when they're going to go in. That's gone in. Right. What else have we got? 6520 PIA chip. Last but not least, I can't really see for this bloody cable. 
Is he going to go in? Yes. There we go. Right. So that's everything in the board. As I say, I will use the DVI connector because I haven't. Sonny! You little. What are you doing? Shit. Right, so we'll use the DVI output here. Grab a power source. This doesn't even seem to sense that there's a, a DVI cable plugged in at all. That's a bit strange. Don't say there's another error on the board. That's not even registering that there's a cable plugged into the TV. That's not very encouraging. I was going to say maybe the Sophia is set up for a resolution that this TV doesn't like, but it doesn't seem to even think there's a cable plugged in. Oh God, don't say there's a problem with the Sophia board. Well, let's at least establish that we've got some power. Right, so measure it across that decoupling capacitor. We've got 4.983 volts. And on the GTI chip itself, actually. So we've got power. That's actually a bit warm, so that's good. Right, so it's turning on. Whether or not it's booting up, I don't know. So I'm going to have to go and look for some jumpers. I will look for some jumpers and return. Right, I found some jumpers here. I actually pinched them off an SCCC board, a super color CPU board. So let's see where these have got to go. UAV 1 to 5. So with these jumpers in place, I should get theoretically the uav video output from oh, turn that off i should get uav video so if we change the source on the tv to oh it's already on that one ev3 right so this is the s video connection from the atari so let's see if we get anything here oh <laughs> oh I was so convinced this wouldn't work first time, I wasn't even looking at the screen. I just heard the the SIO noise. Wow, that's unexpected. But why is it booted straight to the self-test? That's a bit strange. But I hope it works. And the UAV works as well. The picture looks pretty nice. So there you go, we've booted straight to the self-test here. I don't know why. I seem to have a vague recollection of some correction to the basic ROM socket here, but um, I know what I'll do. I'll just plug a side three cartridge into it. I just want to have a proper look at the blue screen to see if um, to see what it looks like, basically. Let's see if it looks nice, and it looks nice. That's as good UEV output I've seen on an NTSC machine. Still get the very very faint trace of the clocking signal, but. Um, that's normal. So I must have put the UAV together correctly anyway. <laughs> right, let's connect the keyboard. Now, speaking of the keyboard, this keyboard looks obviously completely awful, but the owner has ordered uh, a decent XE keyboard uh, in white. So that's going to look good. So we don't have to worry about retrobiting the keyboard or anything. I've still got to modify the keys for the for the DVI connector and stuff, but I just want to see. I wonder if this will actually boot the loader. Bearing in mind, I did fortify this machine for use with side three. Where would we actually go? Oh, oh, oh. Wow. It works with side three. Mind you, this is side 3.0, so it should work. Fantastic. See if it'll start a cartridge up. Try Ace of Aces. Yep, no problem at all. Wow. Oh yes, the the RAM upgrade as well. If I put this in SpartaDOS X mode, we can do a mem command at the SpartaDOS X prompt, and we'll see if the extended memory works. Because I've got it set to 512k. Oops. M E M put X as well. And yes, that works as well. So we've got 32 16K banks. One of them's used by SpartaDOS X automatically. Fantastic. Uh, nothing really worked for me at all first time this year. So the fact that this has just worked the first time I powered it on 
is absolutely astonishing yes what's let's have a look see what's the matter with this dvi connector all right so let's have a look and see if there's anything in this thread about the dvi connector i'm sure i saw something the other day about this this, this is a problem you see the information about this is spread all over the thread and i don't even know if this is the correct thread it might be in the pre-order thread aha here we go something here i redraw dvi circuit from main board and compare with original DVI board and so forth too. Oh god. Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. Missing TDMS data shield. No problem. Easy to fix by wire. Oh. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. Right. Let's see if we can get this DVI connector to work. Right. There it is. Not pretty at all. It could look a lot nicer. It could look really a lot nicer if I could find me magnet wire, which I can't find, but never mind. Hopefully it'll work well enough to actually get the thing running. There's another bit of bloody wire. Right. Let's give DVI another try and see if we get any different result. Do we actually get a cable sense? That's the, the first thing I want to check. If it senses that the cable's plugged in, it does. That's a good sign. So we've got like a grounded cable sense connection, which is kind of encouraging. Come on. DVI. It took ages for this bloody television to... to oh, yeah. oh, there we go. There we go. Right, we've got a picture. It works. That's a real shame that uh, all that bodge work had to be done to the DVI connector because I thought it was a really neat solution. And this is a Rev2 board as well. It seems to imply that Santos P, you, you put the traces on as per some DVI spec. Sounds good, doesn't work. I would have just copied it from the Sophia 2 adapter board because why? Because we know that works. I'll, I'll try and do a neater job of that patchwork later on but anyway we'll plug the keyboard in we'll see if we can't program this pick chip for the tk2 then i'll try and dig a ps2 keyboard out from the spare room and we'll see if that works because once that works i'll have to test sio as well but once we've got the tk2 working and we know that sio works then the machine's basically done and I've just had a look at the errata documents that mr fish sent me as well and there is definitely an issue with the basic ROM socket here, there's an error which pertains to EEPROMs, which actually prevents EEPROMs from working with basic on them. But as far as I can tell, it's very hard to make head or tail of what it actually means. It seems to imply that you need to fix the trace error to get an EEPROM to work, but that the masked ROM, because the masked ROM doesn't even touch those two pins, the masked ROM it looks like it'll just never work. So that's why basic doesn't work when I turn the machine on. I'll have to find an EEPROM, program it with Rev revision C basic or whatever the owner wants, fix the board and then it should work. So that's not, not really a big deal. What I really want to do is get that TK2 pick program. So let's see if uh, I'll, I'll head off and I'll download the, the flashing tool from MyTech's website and we'll see if we can get that done. Right, so this is MyTech's wonderful website. It has to be said, it is a very, very nice website indeed. I don't know what it's uh, powered by. Yeah, Weebly's the website builder. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for TK2. Um, installation. TK2. I want the pick programmer. Where it is. Uh, oh. TK2 archives, schematic, bill of materials, PCB. Don't want that. Where's the programmer for the pick chip? Uh, right, so this appears to be flashing now. I eventually found the correct firmware file. For some reason, my brain couldn't interpret that graphic on Michael's website as a download button. Um, but anyway, I've, I found it eventually. So this is the universal TK2 firmware. So that's flashing now, and when it's done, oh, and it's done now. Right, so we can actually pop the chip in the board, and then I'll run next door, grab a PS2 keyboard, because Michael actually sent me four PS2 keyboards ages and ages ago. And I've, I've kept them all, so I, I can grab a brand new one if I need to. Okay, so 
let's go and get a keyboard all right found the ps2 keyboard i've had to take the board out of the case obviously because there's no holes cut in the back to allow access to all this stuff but let's have a look well the lights flashed on the keyboard that's a good sign uh-oh uh uh-oh what's happened oh there we go now why did it not boot that time Oh, it doesn't look like it works. Ow! Ow! Right, this pick chip here was absolutely molten hot. And uh, that seems to be, must have been what was causing the intermittent booting. I've actually burnt the side of my arm on the damn thing. Now, of course, I had it in, if I can pick it up yet. Yes. Of course, I put the socket in this way which goes with the way the writing for the chip is. So I'm assuming that this was pin one down at the bottom here. Are you telling me that this is not the way it's supposed to go? It's supposed to go the other way. It doesn't appear to be molten hot. Probably burnt the chip out and I'll have to buy another one now. Oh, that was fucking stupid. If you put the writing on the opposite way up to the chip supposed to go in. Yeah, it still doesn't work. Probably the chip's blown now. Why put the right in the opposite way around to the fucking orientation of the chip, for Christ's sake? Well, we'll just forget about that for the moment. Well, it seems to think it's programmed successfully, but I've properly, legitimately burnt my arm there. If you look at how red that is there, it done off smart a bit. That chip was scalding hot. Put the chip in this way around. Plug in the external keyboard. Ah, works. Keyboard works. Brilliant, brilliant. But why won't it boot straight into the loader? <laughs> That's hilarious. All of a sudden, this doesn't work with side three properly. Well, why would, you, why would we be surprised by that? But anyway, the TK2 does now work, despite the chip heating up to about 200 degrees C and burning my arm, because the thing was on backwards. So I don't know if I'll be bothered to replace that socket and put it on the right way around or not. I've actually got an imprint of a pick chip in the in my forearm there. Ow, that's as bad as a solder burn actually. Well I hope you found that one interesting. I think it's uh, a nice looking board despite the bodges and disp despite the fact the TK2 chip tried to kill me. <laughs> it's turned out nicely. It was a lot of work. I could have saved an awful lot of time if I'd known about Panther's bill of materials where you had all the Mauser catalogue numbers on them. I'm very um, upset that I didn't know about that, but never mind. But uh, I'm very impressed that it worked first time. It would be nice if the the remaining issues on the board were corrected. I don't have the know-how to do that, but maybe somebody can fix it. Or maybe it has been fixed. I know the owner bought this board. I think he mentioned the other day that he bought this board quite a long time ago. Maybe, maybe things have been fixed since then. I don't know. But I'm just absolutely relieved that it works and it appears to work reliably as far as i can tell obviously i still need to do more tests with it just to make sure the extended memory uh, works properly i'll run xram on it i'll try it with all sorts of different software i don't know what's going on with the side three cartridge it uh, doesn't want to boot the loader straight from power up for some reason but why should i be surprised about that at this stage of the game but yeah i hope you found that interesting and i know for a fact there's a few people who've got these boards lying around that they've bought that they've uh they're thinking about putting together and uh, what i think would really be helpful is if the information, especially in the pre-order thread, was collated maybe at the top of the thread or in some sort of web page or something. Whether or not I'll have time or the inclination to do it myself, I don't know, but it would be really nice if that sort of pool of information that I've had to eke out of that thread sort of long-windedly was just all packaged together so you knew, even with the V2 boards, you knew exactly just all on one page take those caps off for high-speed SIO, the correction for the DVI port, which way up the TK2 pig chip goes, stuff like that. I don't think the outcome's that bad anyway. And I know for a fact that the owner, from what he's seen of it so far, is absolutely 
delighted with the outcome and uh, as I say he's bought a decent XE keyboard so all I need to do which I won't bother showing you in this video because I've done it that many times before you've seen them you can look at any video where I've cut the hole for the the DVI connector at the back you'll need to use a custom cable to get audio out of the machine I don't want to start putting a well, in fact, there's no way on here to put a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Normally I would put it there, but of course that space is occupied by the TK2 port. So he's, if, when he's using the Sophia DVI output, he's, he's going to need a special cable that will just tap the audio off the, the legacy monitor port. So that, well, that shouldn't be a problem. I could probably make one up for him if he needs me to. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, if I, if I get asked to do another one of these again, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier and it'll probably take half as long. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope something in the video uh, has been helpful, even if you're not going to build one of these things. I hope you found it enjoyable. And uh, with that, I just have to thank the video sponsor and I have to thank, of course, my loyal patrons, uh, without whom this channel probably wouldn't continue. So a uh, special thank you to all of you for your support. So I'll be back soon and I'll see you in the next video. So bye bye for now.